Dixie here. Today I'd like to answer the question, what do you consider when you're deciding where to go backpacking? One of my patrons on Patreon recently asked me this question and I felt like it was a good idea to share with y'all because I know as a beginner, once you gather up all of your gear, it can probably be a bit overwhelming trying to figure out, okay, now where do I go backpacking and how do I decide on that location? First and foremost, I think weather, the season and geographical location in regards to those two things is certainly important to think about. For example, I went backpacking in the dead heat of summer in Georgia last month and the humidity was so high that I was practically swimming instead of hacking. And it probably would have been a bit more enjoyable if I had waited till the fall sometime or if I had gone hiking up north where the temperatures were cooler instead. But that's gonna be personal preference because some people prefer hiking in much cooler temperatures, some in warmer temperatures. For myself, I'm kind of in the middle. I don't want things too hot or too cold. As far as just basic weather is concerned though, especially if you're beginning, it's a good idea to hike in more favorable weather, so not to plan for a week where you're gonna be in a complete downpour the whole time. If you're gonna get out and enjoy nature, you might as well do it in your preferred type of weather. Another point I've had to consider when planning a trip is dealing with permitting and reservations. So if I'm booking a last minute trip, say for the pictured rocks up in Michigan, and it's booked a month out, then that's really not gonna work in my favor. Also, if I'm not really wanting to stick to a specific schedule, then I need to make sure I pick an area to go backpacking where I'm not having to make a reservation each night and plan my schedule out ahead of time, like the trip that I did on the Pine Mountain Trail in Georgia. There are a lot of areas in the US that you can go out and backpack, camp where you would like to for the night, and you don't have to have everything planned out ahead of time, but some people do prefer to have a specific plan so they can share that with their family. Again, a lot of these things are really gonna depend on what your preferences are. And with permitting, it's kind of a similar idea. There are certain trails that have such high traffic flows that they have to issue permits. There's only a limited number of things like the Wonderland Trail up in Washington or the John Muir Trail in California or even the Pacific Crest Trail from Mexico to Canada. With those trails, you have to apply for a permit by a certain time of the year and then sometimes there's a drawing or it's a first come first serve type thing. Of course, it depends on the trail specifically, but that's also something that you would have to plan for way in advance. Next is views. And this one's kind of a no brainer for a lot of people. But for me personally, I don't necessarily need to see a breathtaking vast view to really consider it something cool to see. It could be just a specific landmark or even things like in Yellowstone, all of the thermal activity that you see there is absolutely incredible. And some people like to go backpacking through historic sites. So it really depends on what type of adventure you're looking for and what you hope to see. Something else that I've thought about when planning for shorter trips is, is it a new trail or a new state? I had planned on going up to the Pictured Rocks area in Michigan because I've never been to Michigan and that's one of the two states that I have left to visit in the US. And so I was hoping to kind of kill two birds with one stone, not actually harm any birds, but I wanted to go and be able to hike in that area and also cross a new state off of my bucket list. Uh, some people like to do the same old trusty trails. They like to kind of feel something familiar and it's comforting to them. But for me, I feel like there are so many trails to see in the world and just not enough time in one lifetime. So I prefer to cover new ground when possible. Something else that certainly matters to me is the length of trail. So from point A to point B, can I get those miles done in the time frame that I'm hoping to be out on trail? And a lot of that depends on my personal fitness at the time and if I'm in shape or if I'm not. So obviously if I was coming fresh off of a through hike, I could do more miles than if I've been laying up on the couch for a few months. But the trail doesn't necessarily need to be that exact length that I wanna do. I just need to make sure that I have a trailhead at point A to point B and in between those two points is a length of trail that I feel comfortable doing in whatever amount of days I'm planning on being on trail. Terrain. Terrain is something I never forget to think about because I either want to go out to Colorado and bag 14 footers or maybe I just want to relax a little bit and hike somewhere where there are rolling hills. But there is certainly a difference of energy exerted 
in both of those situations. I typically check out the elevation profile before I go to so I can kind of get an idea for how many miles I want to do. And again, that's going to play into how in shape I am at the time. But that's just something that I always, always consider when I go out on a backpacking trip. Next is proximity to home. Most of the time, as I mentioned, I like to kind of get away and see something completely different if I can. But sometimes if I've only got so much time to travel, then I've got to do something a bit closer to home. I think that that's something important to think about because while it may sound great to go out to Washington and do a, a week of hiking, if you only have a week off of work, you have to consider your travel time. And is it gonna be worth it to go out there and take up a couple of days of travel time there, a couple of days back, and now you're looking at maybe only having three days on trail, where if you do something closer to home, you could have closer to that week time to actually be out on trail. Water sources. This is something that I scope out 100% of the time before I go out on trail, because it's important to know what capacity of water I need to be able to carry, how often I should expect to come across a water source. And for me personally, I do not like to carry a lot of water if I don't have to. Water is heavy. One liter weighs 2.2 pounds. And so if I can come across a water source and not have to tote all that weight, that is wonderful. I also prefer to camp by a water source. Some people don't mind dry camping. I've certainly done it, especially out on the Pacific Crest Trail and the Continental Divide Trail. But I like to be around water and sometimes that's a seasonal thing. There may be water sources that flow only in the cooler months and they go dry in the summer months. So that'll kind of tie into certain areas being better to hike in specific seasons. Next, I consider transportation options and the ease of access to a trailhead. So there are some trails that have a big enough community around them that they've got hostels or shuttle services where you can park your vehicle with them or they'll pick you up at the airport even and then take you to the trailhead and pick you up when you finish and, and take you back to whatever transportation method you use to get there. Now this makes things a lot easier and clears up things logistically. I'm not saying that this has to be in place for me to go hike in a specific area, but it's certainly something to consider, especially with how much time I have to put into traveling. If you're planning on depending on yourself a lot and you don't really wanna do anything like shuttle services, then there are a couple of options that you can consider. First, you can look for trails that are loops. So you just park at the trailhead, start out, go around, and it'll bring you right back to your vehicle. And then there's also the option of parking and doing an out and back. So where you do a specific amount of miles whenever you decide to stop and then turn around and come back. And I know folks might think, oh, well, I'm seeing the same trail twice, but on different days, the trail will look different. Maybe the first day when you went through an area, it was raining. And when you come back through, it's a pretty sunny day. And also you're seeing a different view the whole time when you're facing a different direction. So anyway, don't knock it until you try it. Finally, one of the last considerations that I personally think about is the ease of resupply. And this is really only when I'm going on a longer trek, like I have plans to do the Penhody Trail in the fall of this year and it's 300 plus miles, so it's important to know that I will be able to get food along the way. It may be that you're okay with a more difficult resupply, but I think it's good to know what to expect, so that's certainly something that I think about. Because I'm only one person with my own opinions and a limited amount of experience, I reached out to some of y'all on my social media platforms and ask your thoughts on this topic and what you think about when you're planning for a backpacking trip. And a lot of people had the same ideas as me, but there were some additional things that I don't necessarily think about, so I wanna share those also. First off, a lot of y'all said that it matters whether you're going solo or with another person. So maybe you're willing to go to a bit more risky area, but when you're taking somebody new to backpacking, you go in maybe an area where you know that that person is gonna have a good time or see something very beautiful. So you're more likely to go to a familiar area than a new area. Also, a lot of you mentioned that the amount of human interaction definitely plays into where you go backpacking. It might be that you prefer more solitude or it might be that you really like to run into people and make friends while you're out on trail. Somebody mentioned that vertical exposure means a lot to them. So how often they're on the side of a cliff is important. And if you're somebody who has issues with heights, 
then that's definitely something to look into before you head out to the trail. And finally, something that I didn't really think about, but that I do prefer if it's at all possible, is whether campfires are permitted or not. If not being able to have a campfire is a deal breaker for you, then planning a backpacking trip to say California right now would not be a good idea. And there are a lot of different areas in the country that do have restrictions on having campfires at specific times of year and even limit what type of backpacking stove you can have. So again, if that's something important to you, then you should certainly look into it before you go. So those are all the considerations that I have for y'all today, but I just wanted to share a little bit more about how I actually find a specific trail to check out. And I mean, Google is your friend when you're trying to look for an area to go backpack in. For example, when I decided, hey, I'd like to go backpack in a state that I've never been in before, Michigan, I literally Googled best backpacking trails in Michigan and the pictured rocks area popped up. And I'm sure you could do this for different countries, different regions, different states. And then once you kind of peg a certain area or a certain trail, again, Google is your friend and you can research it a bit more. Also, Facebook typically has pages for, or groups, for specific trails or certain regions. And also, if you're looking for trails in your specific area, then you can do some searching around on the All Trails app because that's pretty good for locating trails local to you. But I think the most important thing that a new backpacker can do when they're trying to figure out where they want to go is just look inside yourself and try to figure out what type of experience you're looking for. The great thing about nature is nobody can tell you the proper way to spend time in it because it depends on you and what you're looking to get out of it. All right, y'all, well, I hope some of y'all found this video helpful. And if you've got any other points that you consider when planning a backpacking trip, feel free to include that in the comments below because it might be helpful to others. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go and we will see y'all next time.